Welcome to ETAP's video tutorial on DC Arc Flash. In today's agenda, we will be talking about two of the three available methods used to perform a DC Arc Flash analysis with an ETAP. The first method we'll be talking about is the Stokes and Oppenlander method, which was developed by A.D. Stokes and W.T. Oppenlander. The next method we will be talking about is the Pockert method which was developed by J. Pockert. We will also be illustrating how to utilize these methods with an ETAP. The Stokes and Oppenlander method is an empirical method that was derived from a free burning vertical and horizontal arc test in a series electric configuration for arcs in open air. The tests were extensive and were compiled by Stokes and Oppenlander. Based on these tests, a set of empirical equations were created. As a result of these equations, we can use the gap between conductors and we can determine the actual magnitude of the arcing current. Now this is important because now we will have a more realistic representation of the arc fault current. As can be seen in this slide, we see different test results for different arc gaps. It can be seen that the equations will be able to provide results that are coherent with the test results for different arc voltages. How does this apply in ETAP? If we go back to ETAP, we now have to consider one more parameter before we can run our analysis. We now must consider the arc gap between both the energized conductors. This parameter can be entered by double clicking on the bus and going to the DC arc flash parameters page. We can note that under the section labeled conductor slash electro properties, there is a section that denotes the gap between the conductors or electrodes. In this case, the gap is 20 millimeters. If the gap were to exceed a certain distance, it is possible that there may not be enough voltage for this arc to occur or sustain. Therefore, there would not be a true arc flash hazard due to the fact that there would be too much distance between the conductors. Let's proceed to run an arc flash analysis utilizing the Stokes and Oppenlander method. This method attempts to calculate the actual magnitude of the arc fault. Note that the results of this method should be more realistic when compared to that of the maximum power method. If we double click on the DC bus 2 and look at the DC arc flash page, we will see that the values represented on the one line have also been updated in the editor. The way that the DC arc flash module has been configured, ETAP will always update the values in the bus if the results are more conservative. Of course, this is an option in the study case that is listed in the arc flash method page. So if one were to run different methodology and the results are more conservative than the pre previous methodology, the user can configure the study case editor to update the bus results which are the highest into each fault location. Similarly, the Pockert method is developed and based on a compilation of test results and test data. This method is valid for arcing currents ranged from 0 0.3 amps to 100 kiloamps, with conductor gaps from 1 to 200 millimeters. The Pockert method as well as the Stokes and Oppenlander method can be found in the DC arc models and incident energy calculations paper which is also listed under Annex D8.1.2. For the Pockert method we have a set of equations which are utilized by ETAP. These equations allow ETAP to determine the arc voltage and arc resistance for various gap distances. As can be seen in these two tables, depending on the gap difference, the appropriate equations will be selected to determine the magnitude of those two parameters. Similarly to the Stokes and Oppenlander method, if the gap voltage and the system impedance are within the limit, the model can predict if the arc can be sustained or not. Unfortunately, this method requires an iterative process to determine the solution. It has to be solved iteratively with the system's impedance. Let's go back to ETAP 
and run the pocket method. We will notice that in this particular location, DC bus 11, a message stating that the arcing current is less than 100 amps, is displayed. This is one of the limits of one of the equations within the Pockert method. So as can be seen, this method attempts to model this system more accurately when compared to that of the results produced through the use of the maximum power method, where an arc fault is always assumed to be sustained. Utilizing the maximum power method at this location, you can see that at a fault clearing time of 0.1 seconds, and an incident energy of 0.15 calories per centimeter squared is displayed on the one line. That illustrates the main difference between the Stokes and Oppenlander method and the Pockert method in comparison to that of the maximum power method. The Stokes and Oppenlander and Pockert method can let the user know if the arc can occur and be sustained, while the maximum power method always predicts some kind of incident energy.